Good morning, friends. I hope y'all have had a blessed day yesterday. Um, I want to share something with you that has um, been laying pretty heavy on my heart. Uh, I ran into a friend yesterday, uh, a Christian friend. I've known this lady, oh my gosh, uh, probably 30 years or more. <clears throat> And um, she was telling me about her granddaughters and what she shared with me was that one of her granddaughters, who's 14 years old, uh, came inside uh, their home. And she, t and she calls her grandmother mama because grandmama's been raising them. Uh, they're twins. And this one, uh, she told her grandmama, you better take me to the hospital. Grandmama said, well, well why? And she said, well, it, it's because that as I was uh, trying to walk back home, a voice kept telling me, jump out in front of the cars, jump out in front of the cars. And she said that it scared her so bad that she feels that she might need mental help. <clears throat> well, friend, I, I, and then the grandmother shared with me how about a year ago, one of her friends, uh, a, a boy, had went outside and told his mom he would be back in just a little bit, took his phone and typed in a suicide letter and then went out to the barn and hung himself. Now friend, it is time that you and I, and, and like I said, I'm, I'm preaching to myself here that we quit playing church. You know, ever since I talked to her yesterday afternoon, this thing has been laying extremely heavy on my heart about the young people. Um, well, she took her granddaughter to the hospital and had to, and it was almost unbelievable, but she stayed there several days. <laughs> it was hard to believe but the hospital, it's a long story, but anyway, the hospital wouldn't put the child in a room. I know that's hard to believe, but anyway. But so many young people came to the hospital and she overheard these young kids talking to their parents or either sibling about how they hate life, they wish they could die, they've attempted suicide. And that's when I realized, you know, <laughs> the enemy, of course, that snake Satan, he's after the young people. He is after the young people. Because, friend, they are so impressionable. And, you know, you and I who are well-schooled in religion and in God's Word, you know, we are not ignorant to the wiles of the devil. But these young people who are being raised up in schools that don't believe in God, who are, they're listening to music and the lyrics does not acknowledge God our Creator. And they have to be growing up without any hope. You right now, if you believed that even like Paul said, I believe it was Paul. 
If we only have hope in this life, friend, we are most miserable. In other words, if this life, what we have on earth, is all that there is, there is no afterlife, there's nothing better than what we are experiencing right now, then who wouldn't want to go kill themselves? I mean, seriously think of this. If you were taught that when I die, it's over for me. There is no heaven, there is no hell. You know, like that song that was sung many years ago. I think it was by John Lennon. There is, imagine no heaven above us, no hell beneath us. Well, if there is no afterlife of a better place, how miserable and depressing is this life? You just think of that. It would be extremely depressing. And that is what our children are facing. Our children are facing a extremely depressed state of mind because the school system that doesn't allow Bibles or prayers or the teaching of God's Word the belief in God our Creator these children are growing up and they're atheists I mean as far as when it comes to believing in Jehovah God you know how depressing is that so with that thought in mind how do we reach the young people? How do we reach the young people? When the young people, when these kids, they don't want to come to church. There's nothing there for them. I mean, they're going to, you, you make them sit there and be quiet, be still. And, and rightfully so, they should because the minister, you know, is preaching a sermon. But young people, they need something powerful. Well, let me tell you what they need. Young people, <laughs> they need the Holy Ghost. They need the excitement and the power of the Holy Ghost to run through them. The way the, go the, the, the Holy Ghost... The Holy Spirit has ran through us to where we get goosey bumps, you know? Goosey bumps are exciting. It's a tangible manifestation that God's power is touching us. You know, words are weak without the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Friend, we need the Holy Ghost in us. The temple in Jerusalem, when the Holy Ghost left, when the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom, and the Holy Ghost left, all you had left on the temple mount was a building without God's presence. Useless. I mean, useless. You know, without the Holy Ghost there, there is no power. There is no anointing. There is no God. And these children... And me and you, 
we must have the Holy Spirit in us. Because if we don't, we are nothing but empty shells. We are empty temples with no power, no anointing, and no presence of the Almighty God in us. So how do we change this? Well, what I suggest is like what I've done through the years. You must have time, family time. You know, it ain't, you know, the, the dinner table is where families would meet to enjoy a meal. Well, friend, your living room or family room or dining room also needs to be the place the family meets with the Father. I, I am suggesting to each one of you that have children, and if you're not doing this, or they're away from the Lord, tell them to come and let's have family time together. And you could have a time in God's Word, a time in brief prayer, because you don't want it to be something they don't look forward to. If you started out, so five minutes today, that's all we're going to do, five minutes. We'll read a couple of scriptures, pray a little prayer, spend a little time together for five minutes. And then that you can either let them go back to what they were doing, or you could play a game with them, a board game, play checkers, play chess, you know, play go fish. <laughs> Do something to reconnect with your children for five or ten minutes today. Then tomorrow, let it move up to six or seven minutes. The next day, seven or eight minutes. And slowly, slowly, a little at a time, your children will begin to look forward to that time when they saw mom and daddy laugh. With a... Now, of course, I know I'm talking to some people that are already doing this. And that's great. Uh, your children are, are probably on fire for God. They're listening to Christian music. And they love the Lord and they're reading the Bible because you have instilled this into them. But this world will make us so busy that we don't have time or either we don't take the time for our children. And I promise you, if you will begin this, the children, I bet you, I promise you, within a week or two, will begin to say, Mama, what time are we meeting today? Daddy, what time are we going to meet today for our family time? And, you know, allow them to uh, shop for games they would like to play. I mean, goodness, you can go to a toy or, uh, yeah, you can go to Toys R Us, and there is a wall of a thousand different games. You know, children, and this is what me and this lady talked about, when we were children, we didn't have uh, this kind of uh, thing going on back in the 60s and 70s. You know, we played by going outside, riding our bicycle, and playing with the dog, chasing the dog, 
throwing footballs, throwing frisbees. That's all there was to do. There was no cell phones, there was no computers, there was no iPads, iPods, laptops, um, no boom boxes. I mean, we just went out, as, we just went and played. Played in the dirt, you know? I mean, we just, we just played. Now, children don't play. They sit still and punch buttons. If they're playing a game on TV, a, a computer game or what, all they're doing is pushing buttons. Their legs aren't running. They're, I mean, think of it. Their play is simply pushing buttons with their little fingers. That's it. It isn't something that they physically are active. It's mental. What they see is just reactionary to what they're seeing and then their buttons. Moving a little button and, and, and that's it. Seriously, let this sink in. No wonder our children are in the situation they are. They're growing up. There is no God. The Bible has no relevance today. This is what they're being taught. And their play is pushing buttons. You think of that. I mean, no wonder our children are so depressed. They need to run. They need to play. They need to be active. They need to get outside and let the sun, let the sun. You know, there's actually a vitamin that the sun gives your body. And it helps uh, with the uh, overall feeling of, of well-being uh, in, in the chemical structure of your body. Uh, I don't know if that's, I don't know which vitamin it is, if it's vitamin D or, or, but you can look it up. But anyway, you know, the children need to feel the enjoyment of playtime outside and the enjoyment of spending time with mama and daddy. With the TV turned off, all the cell phones silenced, and have family time. And friend, like I said earlier, we have got to get the Holy Spirit back in our lives. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. Without the Holy Spirit, friend, we're empty. Absolutely empty. Well, I hope that we find a way, find a way to reconnect with our children for those that need to reconnect with your children and that we pray and invite the Holy Spirit back into our lives. Benny Hinn wrote a book called Good Morning Holy Spirit and whatever your feelings are or thoughts on Benny Hinn I would suggest you read the book, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. It's a great book. God bless you, my friend. You have a blessed and wonderful day.